Right folks, back again with another experiment. This time it is some cider done with Pat Max caps. Um, so what I've done is I've made two identical batches. They're both three litre bottles. One was made, uh, sorry, they were both made with pear and apple juice uh, from Concentrate Prince's pear and apple juice, which I've used before in a cider and it came out lovely. Uh, didn't really taste the pears, but it just was better than plain apple juice, so just thought I'd use that again. But what I've done this time, I've actually made a few changes now. I do recommend that when you're doing these experiments to just kind of change one element at a time, whether it's the yeast, whether it's the amount of time it ferments or whatever like that. But I've actually changed a few elements to this, so if it's radically different than what I was getting before, I'm not really going to know which step it was, if you know what I mean, that made the change. So I do recommend just changing one thing at a time. However, it just kind of turned out this way. So the difference is one, I use the yeast that comes with the Pat Max caps, and then the other one I used a little half sachet of young cider yeast. Okay, so I made these batches on the 4th of June. Now, normally I just leave these for about a week and then I stick them in the fridge for a couple of days and then drink them and they're great, you know. Uh, they've always been quite cloudy. Now, I thought I would try just a wee bit of an experiment just to see how different it would be. So, I left them fermenting for 15 days and then I stuck them in the fridge. Now, I noticed towards the end of the fermentation they were starting to get a quite clear towards the top. So then I refrigerated them on the 19th of June. It's now the 24th, so they've been refrigerated for five days. So what I was saying earlier on is, if this tastes really different than my other batches, is it because they fermented for twice as long? Is it because of the yeast? Is it because they were refrigerated longer, do you know what I mean? So now there's a lot of variables in play, but anyway, let's give them a try and see how they go. Now, one thing I have noticed is they're much clearer, much clearer than the results we were getting before. The other thing is, I think I've lost a bit of carbonation because there's a bit of squidge in these bottles and normally they are rock solid, so they might not be that carbonated. Again, why is that? Is it because of the longer fermentation? Is it because they're being chilled for longer? Don't know, don't know. So we might, might have to back step in a few of these steps and see, but let's crack them open. Normally they're super lively, so maybe, maybe they won't be. Whew, hardly anything there. That's very unusual, very unusual for these. I think there's maybe at this the Pat Max one did blow out the top a little bit, so there's a bit of yeast around there because I am smelling a bit of yeast. I'm not getting much off it, but if I squidge the bottle, I'm getting some apple. But let's go. Let's go. Okay, so. That was the Pat Max yeast. I'm now going for the Young Cider yeast bottle. Seems like there's a little bit more hiss coming off of that. Still not a lot though. One thing I did notice, <coughs> the amount of trub, I think that's what you call it, trub, troop, whatever, at the bottom of the bottles is, it looks about the same now, but when they were fermenting out, the one with the young cider yeast is more quicker 
than this one. The, the Pat Max one didn't really have much sitting at the bottom there. But I think they've maybe ended up both in the same place, but just at different times. There's maybe slightly more actually in the Young's bottle. Um, you can, I don't know if you can really see there, but there's certainly more sort of Croizen debris uh, around the top of the Young's one. Pat Max one looks quite different. I don't know if you'll pick any of this up on film, but it just looks totally different. But anyway, let's follow. So, Pat Max one. Not really getting anything off that. Uh, and the second one. I'm not getting a huge amount off that either. I've, I've said in one of my other videos, and I, I'm not going to keep saying it every video, but I do have a pretty bad sense of smell actually, so uh, there might be more coming off it than I'm able to detect, but let's try them. So, Pat Max yeast first. Nice. Now the things that I notice are definitely not as sweet. There was a sweetness leaving, you know, finishing them early in the fermentation. There was sweetness to them, but it was kind of, I thought it was just about the right amount. I think that's maybe lacking a little bit. minimal but it's just <laughs> hard to describe it's got that slight whiny edge to it very 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 slightly which I've had when I've done demijohns and that is probably because they are fermenting right out It's lovely though. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm picking this apart here, but it's super clean. It's very clear. I mean, it's crystal clear. It's just that it's just frosting on the glass there that you're seeing. It's really, really, really clear. It's lovely. So, this is a young side of this one. Not that different. There's a slightly musty smell off it. Even think so much of the smell, it's actually more the taste. Mm. Very close run thing, though. There's not much in it, there really isn't. I expected there to be more of a difference and I expected the really the cider yeast to come out better, really, as it is a cider yeast, but uh, I think I think doing it this way, you the result you're getting is more like just doing a damage on where you you don't have the resistance of what the caps are doing. Excuse me. So you're basically getting the damage on, you know, airlock in, putting the yeast in and just letting it ferment right out. And then you end up with a really dry cider, really clear. Occasionally with that sort of wine edge to it. 
you're getting closer to that doing it this way. So I think I'm going to do a hydrometer test just to see what the alcohol level is in that because it's probably, well, I'd almost guarantee it's higher than if you stop the fermentation after a week. But yeah, let me do a hydrometer test and we'll have a look and see. Okay, so I've done hydrometer tests on both of them and they're both coming out final gravity of 1010. Original gravity is 1048, which gives an ABV of 4.99%. Now, I think we can safely say that's 5%. <laughs> so, a straight 5%er. <coughs> now, what I'm thinking now is the one the ones that I've done with these bottles which I've done and maybe just let them ferment for a week and then put them in the fridge just for 48 hours and tasted have been amazing I've been just that is probably the best I've had so far so if you wanted to up the alcohol of these guys then what you could do is you could add some sugar and then just do exactly what I've done there and leave them for two weeks and then the fridge for five days because then you might be left with a bit of residual sweetness and that alcohol level will be up a bit. That's the thing, it's tinkering man, it's totally about tinkering with all the little different elements and that's why I was saying change one thing at a time. I think I've changed too many things at the one time here because now I don't, I'm kind of left with results that I don't know what to do with, but gets you thinking. So anyway, I hope that's been of some use. Uh, I do have another video on doing Pat Max Cider, so have a wee look for that and you can see the difference between that result and this result. Uh, if you like this video or you like any of the other videos, please hit like on them and if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I would really, really appreciate it because see when you're doing these videos, you kind of feel like a bit of a chump and uh, it's nice to know that people might actually be watching them to make the whole thing worthwhile. So please subscribe if you like them, that is of course, and uh, go and make some cider. Catch you later.